What's up, Robot Builders? Uh, we just finished up a campaign for the LittleBot budget uh, a month ago, or uh, about a month ago. We finished deliveries a couple of weeks ago. Um, but there were some questions that came through during the campaign uh, that were really good and we wanted to address because they fit in with what we're doing with the channel. Um, and actually, this list of questions came from uh, one of our largest backers on the LittleBot budget, which was the Creative Fund. And if you don't know who they are, the Creative Fund is a uh, Patreon-backed uh, crowdfunding support community. That's the best way I have of describing it. Uh, what they do is they automatically uh, submit a dollar to anybody who has a campaign going, and then uh, if you are selected by the community, the Patreon community, uh, then you can be the project of the month. And the Little Bot budget was the project of the month uh, back in October, I believe, when the, the, the campaign was going. Uh, but when Creative Fund funded us, about a, about a month ago, in late November, they sent us this batch of questions, and we wanted to go over them in this video. So here it goes. So the first question uh, from the Creative Fund was, what inspired you to crowdfund uh, your robotics projects, and why Kickstarter? Explain the benefits. So uh, the Little Bots is a project within Slant Concepts, and Slant Concepts is a product design company. What we do uh, myself and the rest of the team here, we, uh, we like to take about a week to design a product and then we stick it up on Kickstarter to see if anybody is interested in it. So a week to two weeks to design and get a proof of concept and then we use Kickstarter as a, a proof of concept, proof of market to see if it's a project to continue to pursue. So uh, we crowdfund many of the projects that come through Slant that we develop on our own uh, just as a way to see if they're they're economically viable. Uh, so that's why we do kind of the smaller Kickstarters, sort of the $5,000, $10,000 Kickstarters, and we don't ever go much larger than that because a, a larger one just isn't worth the effort. Um, the Why Kickstarter? Kickstarter just has a much bigger community of people who are looking to see new projects and are, are interested in finding uh, new stuff that's out there. So if you're not able to make something successful on Kickstarter where people are explicitly looking to support a new project and find cool new stuff, uh, then your project won't really be successful anywhere else. So that, that's our philosophy on it as a design firm. Uh, you've run eight successful Kickstarter projects so far. Yes, we have, thank you. Uh, <laughs> you can tell us, the advantage, uh, tell us what the advantages are to running multiple projects instead of just one. So uh, there's no real advantage to running multiple projects at once. Uh, we don't ever generally do that. We try to run, uh, we, in the past, uh, Slant has tried to run uh, projects about once a month. And of the little bots, there have been eight successful Kickstarters. The, the whole team, uh, cumulatively, we've all been a part of probably about 25 to 35 different projects. That's what, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, many of them have been successful, uh, many of them have not. Uh, but that's the whole point of using Kickstarter, which is to test if an idea is any good. Uh, we run lots of campaigns simply but just, just because we have lots of projects coming through that we want to validate and see if anybody's doing it there. We run smaller ones, so they're easier to be successful uh, just off of the organic traffic that comes through. Um, but uh, yeah, that's about it. We run a lot of projects, not because there's a specific benefit to it, but just because that's a, a fail fast, fail often methodology. Uh, what are the advantages of providing affordable robots to families and schools? So this has been a, 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 a goal of the, the Little Bots project for a long time, which is to create a, a, an exceptionally affordable robot. Um, everybody on the team at some point in our lives has had a robotics kit back when we were younger. And we remember saving up and fighting for those kits and trying to, trying to get a hold of one. So, very often, a, a kid who is interested in robotics, it won't often be a toy, be something given it to them. They have to go find it and get it. That's all been our experience, at least. So if you can get a robot down to where a kid with his allowance or with whatever odd jobs he's working can buy it himself, uh, then that's a really cool thing because they're allowed to pursue their passions and these hobbies and explore this opportunity without having to rely on somebody else to give it to them. They're be able to be self-sufficient in exploring STEM and robotics. So when we did the LittleBot budget, it was really exciting for us because we were able to create a robot that was a um, reliable, 
and small and expandable so that a kid could get the robot and then 3D print new parts for it and program new capabilities and buy cheap sensors to give him new abilities without breaking the bank, basically. Uh, our past robots have always kind of been more premium, um, but they had greater capabilities that just weren't out there. Uh, what we always do when we design a new robot for the Little Bots project is take a look at what is done out there in STEM currently um, and see what we can add. Is there a kit or a configuration that just doesn't really exist at a, a kit level um, and make the best one we possibly can. Make it easy to assemble so people don't get frustrated, um, but also just make it good and interesting so that when a kid or a group of students at a school get to use them, they get excited about the technology behind it. Okay, question number uh, whatever next. Uh, you have many different types of robots with seemingly unlimited attachments. What's your personal favorite way to use a little bot? Um, we do have a lot of different robots. Uh, <laughs> even more than have ever come to Kickstarter. Uh, but uh, my personal favorite way to use a little bot, I, I'm sure everybody else is going to have a, a, a different opinion on us. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, man. I... I love the, the fact that you're able to, to build them. My, my personal favorite actually is the little bot budget, and the reason is gonna be very eclectic. Uh, from my background, personally, uh, is robotics uh, design and research and development. The, uh, the little bots are cool to me because I have a personal passion for swarm robotics. And since the little bots are so affordable, we're able to make like a hundred of these and put them into a pile with this, some neat swarm software um, and have them do really cool stuff. And we've only kind of started working with that project, but that's what I'm excited about. It's not really a feature that anybody else in the world cares about, but it's something that I really like. Uh, outside of that, um, I love interacting with the bots on an individual level, and that's kind of the key feature that the bots themselves have uh, when you're just running the regular Walter OS on the little bot budget. The arms themselves, I love the recording feature of the arms because you're able to have this desktop robot that you train to grab something and then later on you can push the button and it will grab that same thing again and move through the same motions the same way an industrial robot arm would. And that's really exciting because it brings something that's expensive and far away and only in car factories and puts it on your desk. So that's why I like the little bit, the little arms. Um, but uh, my, my favorite feature currently is the, the swarm stuff that no one cares about. It is not a, a big selling point here. <laughs> uh, question number next. Uh, how did the creative fund impact your Kickstarter project? Had you heard of us before? Um, I had not heard of the creative fund before. Nobody on the team had heard of the creative fund before. Uh, I think on past projects we had seen uh, the, the initial support dollar come through. Uh, but there was a number of groups who had done that, and it, quite honestly, we, we don't remember those very well. Um, but the Creative Fund, once we, when, the, when we were voted as a project of the month, uh, we all noted the large um, donation there, or the, the large backing there. And uh, we researched it, yeah, and we found out that it was really cool that there was a crowdfunded group supporting crowdfunding projects, and it was a neat concept there. Um, because it was a culmination of Patreon and Kickstarter, or, or a combination of, not a culmination. And uh, it, it was just a neat idea to have people have even smaller contributions, but consistently for larger contributions on something that they all vote for. Um, and that's kind of a neat hybridization of sourcing the crowd to fund new projects. So we had not heard of you before. Um, but it was, it was neat to see that kind of a system helping to support our project and make it successful there for the little bot budget. Uh, a lot of people are scared of robots because of the Terminator movies. I have an opinion on that here. I see where this question is going. Uh, can you convince us that robots can be used to make the world a better place? Okay. So here's the thing with the Terminator movies and AI and robotics and everything else. Um, I get Elon Musk is out there and scared of the robots. Here's the situation with the robots. It's much less of Terminator, it's much more Jurassic Park. So the scenario that we are in right now is with AI research and robotics is a lot of people are creating um, 
software and programs that we don't have explicit control of and do not explicitly know how it's working. Because machine learning is an evolutionary program where you have this black box that the AI is using to make decisions, but we can't understand what's in that black box because it's developed its, itself from its inputs. So it's very easy for that thing to misconstrue its goal. Basically, we're doing something because we can and not necessarily because we should. Uh, that, that's kind of the AI community. A lot of AI researchers are trying to be as careful as possible, but we really don't know what we don't know. Um, because we can't even define intelligence, we can't define what the goals are, and, when we're try and, and the danger is that we will turn loose an AI that is very smart to do something simple and trivial, but in order to solve that solution, it realizes that a good way would be to get rid of people. So that's the, the rundown of the dangers of AI currently. Uh, it's not like the Terminator movies. There's not a malicious intent of Sky Knight that wants to kill us, um, and they're just out to get us. Um, and even if it occurs, there will not be a horde of robots coming out to get us because it's a very inefficient way to do that. Here's guys in the office are going to agree, disagree with me on this one again. Um, my personal opinion on the AI revolution and everything else is, number one, we're, I think we're farther away than people think to the singularity. Um, because even though information is increasing exponentially, or computation is increasing exponentially, uh, it may, it, it, the world is vastly more complex than we realize, and machine learning is vastly more brute force than is efficient for that kind of a situation. Uh, that's a very engineering answer to that. The way robots are good for the world is because a robot is able to work consistently and continuously on a project without ever having uh, to stop or rest. And even if you have a very small thing or very few things, doing something continuously, some task continuously, they can accomplish so much more than people realize. Um, there, there's a parallelism there. So that you can have a herd of robots, small robots, each carrying a cup of water from the ocean to a desert somewhere. And even though they're only moving a cup of water, which is very small, if you have a thousand of them that are just pushed out in a factory someplace, and they just go back and forth and do that for 10 years, they could make a desert green again. Or they could remove all the weeds from a place, or they could collect all the plastic from the ocean, or they could take care of every person on Earth, so on and so forth. All of the potential benefits of robotics are enormous because they're able to do tasks that humanity just doesn't have the physical capability to do um, at that scale, and uh, they're, they're, they're indifferent to it. As far as the dangers of the Terminator movies and everything else, that's it's one of my, even though I enjoy those movies, I hate those movies because they're, they're so wrong and they create so many problems because every time there's some progress made in robotics, people say, Terminator's coming. And I'm sick and tired of hearing that uh, because it's not productive and it's not useful to the conversation of where the dangers of AI actually are. It's a, a blogosphere, clickbaity statement and I'd be perfectly happy if the Terminator movies had never happened. Uh, so that's my rant on that. Uh, so, that's it guys. Those are the questions from uh, the, uh, the Kickstarter that we had. Hopefully this video was fun and interesting to you. They were really good questions guys. The creative fun. Thanks guys for sending those over and we're sorry for taking so long to respond to you. Uh, but we wanted to do it very comprehensively, and we knew that we couldn't write out a reply that was good enough. So we thought this video would probably be best. Uh, the Creator Fund is really cool. We appreciate you guys' support on the campaign. All the rest of you robot builders, stick around, uh, check down below, subscribe, and like this video. If you liked it, you can dislike it too. That's alright, we'll live with it. Um, but thanks everybody, and uh, check out our other videos of how to build the little bots and the different projects that we have going on at any given time. Thanks everybody.